No. Tom Luganbill from ESPN, please come in here and help me, Tom. <laughs> Blaine and Cohn are slowly slipping into insanity, but I, I just rented the boat to take him to Shutter Island. I just got to talk Mark Ruffalo into setting it up for me. Dude, let me just say this. Whatever discussion I fell into right here and I heard the term <laughs> baseball, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I love, baseball I love watching, it. like watching paint dry yeah, or grass good. grow. Mm. I can't take it. I do not understand, and I, I, I'm guilty of maybe not understanding all the subtle nuances, and I can't even imagine what it must take to hit a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. Not easy. But the the standing around is the problem. Like, I, I mean, come on, let's go. Like You mean like, They're the, making the, bases mean like, bigger, like the Steelers' yeah. Like the Steelers offense? Yeah, Tom, yeah. Tom, <laughs> Tom, don't worry. The bases are getting bigger yeah, in baseball, so it's all going to be fixed. So they're, they're, yeah. that's a legitimate true thing. But Blaine does have a good idea about uh, about making baseball more exciting. Blaine, tell Tom your yeah, idea. Yeah, Tom, was a couple things here. We'll start with this. Um, seventh innings, you know, the seventh inning stretch, but it's a seventh inning fight. <laughs> All right, so you'll get a player from each team, whether that's a designated guy you have, designated or two hitter. guys who agree to fight each other, and then they fight in the seventh inning. And, you know, going through Tommy John surgery, that's fine. Let's amputate the whole arm. Let's go Will Smith. I am legend. Let's go robot arm. I want to see 140 miles you want steroids legal. And I want steroids legal. I want to see how hard we can throw it and how far we can hit it. You want butts and seats? And that's how you do it. You're welcome. I'll take 20%. <laughs> I don't disagree. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you what I would do. I'll tell you what I would do. What would you do, Tom? To quicken the whole damn thing up. I'd do a fight after the second inning and then play a third <laughs> inning and then the game's over. I love it. Let's do it, Tom. Let's go. Let's Tom make our own league. Yeah. Let's Tom Lugan, who'd have thought? The alliance we never saw coming. Tom Lugan. Uh, I love line. it. I Being there on Baseball League. But, Tom, I, you know, Lugs, I know you keep up with the NFL, too. What? It, it's funny. If you would have told me that the Browns were the eighth fastest-paced offense – in the NFL, I would have put you in a straight jacket. But they are. I think this is an intriguing matchup tonight. I don't hate this matchup. Mitch Trubisky's trying to resurrect his career. Stop Won't it. throw it past 15 Stop yards, it. but he's trying to resurrect his career. And that, look, it, the, the Browns after last week, see if you can get off the mat. It's football. I Listen, I like it because it's ugly, right? Mm. Everything for these two teams is hard. Nothing is easy which is what makes each and every series, you know, worth watching because you're either waiting to see something surprising that you're not expecting to happen in the passing game, all right, or you're looking to see some bad ball come across uh, your screen. And I, and I hear you guys talking about Mitch Trubisky. I, I, I find it interesting. We, we look at the NFL and we, and we, and we see the parity across the league because obviously it's, it's the top .05% of the people on this planet that are actually playing on 32 teams, but it doesn't matter what level of football we're talking about. You either have a quarterback or you don't, right? I mean, at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you guys gone and looked at Bill Belichick's record since Tom Brady went to Tampa Bay. Uh, system coach. Good. I'm just saying uh, you can go back a long ways. Yeah. Right? Look at Mike Shanahan's career without John Elway. All right. Mm -hmm. Outside of the one year in Seattle, look at Mike Holm Holmgren's career without Brett Favre. I mean, these are you. Uh, here's one for you. All of the three young gurus right now in the NFL: um, the guy at Green Bay, the guy at, at, at um, the Rams, mm. and I want to say the guy at the 49ers. All three of them were on the Redskins staff at the same time, and they were three and thirteen. Yeah. Mm. Why? Players. They didn't have a freaking quarterback. quarterback. Yes. That's why. That's exactly. It's it's a great point. I tell you another one: Phil Jackson. Had Michael Jordan, had Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal. That's why I said I literally led the show. I believe it was on Monday with talent overtakes play calling, and it's not even close because it was always. just about it's always. And some people. That's why, like the the first like South Carolina fans, the first thing they want to do is rip Marcus Satterfield apart. It's Marcus Satterfield's fault we didn't beat Georgia. No, G God was the reason you didn't beat Georgia because they were better. Same. Like they're better players. <laughs> like that's just the truth. As a coach, what am I supposed to do? Sit there in the booth and use magic and like unless oh, like I said, unless you had a relationship with Albus Dumbledore or. Leonardo Gandalf, which I don't know if that's his first name, but I'm just Leonardo just Gandalf. Gandalf. <laughs> what is it's that? Good to me. You weren't winning that game. It actually, you mean we don't know. That's what. That's why I, I always chuckle, and I'm sure you guys have done it too. Like, um, 
For example, the 2012 National Championship game, Notre Dame and Alabama, okay? Those two teams came out of the huddle in pregame warm-up, all right? Standing on the 50-yard line, looking at one team, <laughs> looking at the other team. Ryan Kelly said, I'm going to LSU. <laughs> That team is going to beat that yeah, team by 30 exactly. points. Okay? <laughs> That's and, so true. It, it's the dudes, man. It's the body types. I, hey, listen, Clemson, Alabama, national championship. Current UConn head coach right now, Jim Mora. Mm-hmm. He and I are sitting there in San Francisco, and he goes, we don't have a single player in the Pac-12 that looks like any of the guys <laughs> exactly- that are playing on these two teams right here. Yeah. Physics is physics, go. Tom. Physics yep. is physics. You're not changing it. It's a real thing. Let me try and move this studio real quick by myself. I can't. You want to know why? Because it's physically impossible, David. I can't do it. <laughs> even Bill Nye knows that, and he's not even a real, real science, science guy. Yeah. But, Tom, speaking about ugly, you were at the Georgia Tech game. I I thought well, they were at least going to have a pulse this year with Jeff Sims coming back. Our buddy Jeff Collins, I've been trying to – I know it was a hard overhaul – Taking over for Paul Johnson. I mean, hell, you had 12 running backs on scholarship. I get it. But, man, they just look bad. You saw it in person. Like, I just how bad was it in person? It, it, was, it was bad. You know, I'm sitting there because we had come off of the Labor Day night where Georgia Tech played really, really good. Defense. Yeah. Georgia Tech's yeah. performance against Clemson was more about two-block punts and self-inflicted wounds in terms of procedure penalties than it was about Clemson just going out there and beating them up. That score was not indicative of the game. First half was a fight. This score – was indicative of yeah. how the game um, played out. You know, the issue is, and you referenced Jeff Collins, and I feel for him to some degree because you mentioned the overhaul with the roster. You can make an argument. It's a, it'd be the single most difficult overhaul we've seen in recent men- memory in college yeah, football. It's like taking McDonald's and, you, and selling shoes now. Like, it's, it's the same right. thing. Oh, and then, by the way, add to that, you have to sell shoes in a pandemic where you don't have customers coming into the store exactly and you can't right. go out to the customers. Yeah, you have right? to sell shoes to people that only have arms. So, yeah, it, 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 it killed him. And I'm, I know excuses are running thin at Tech, and, and they should be, and he's on a very, very short leash. But the thing I've taken away, I've taken away a couple of things from them. Number one, they never make their own breaks, ever. They never create something yeah. good. And then when somebody gives them a gift, they don't capitalize on it, yeah. okay? It's, it's, you're just sitting there shaking your head. Number two. The quarterback is so mind-bogglingly frustrated because he's so talented, yep. but he doesn't produce. He's so streaky and inconsistent, and you watch him, and you see him throw, and he's big, and he's fast, and he's athletic, and it's like, what is missing? And they've tried a variety of different ways to get it to work, and for whatever reason, they they can't get it to work. And I just, you know, I, <laughs> you know, I poked some fun at myself here, so... You can make the argument that I was the starting quarterback on maybe the worst Georgia Tech team in the history of, 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 of Georgia Tech, okay? So I'm standing there on the sideline on Saturday, and I'm looking up at the end zone, and I'm seeing their signage, and I'm looking at the uh, 1990 National Championship, right? Mm-hmm. And do you remember that year they were co-national champions? Do you remember with who? I, I don't. I was, uh, gosh. I, Colorado. I what year Colorado. was it? Colorado. Yeah. Colorado. That's right. Colorado. So wow, then I'm looking at the scoreboard. Football. Yeah, it's 42 to nothing. I'm looking at the scoreboard. And then I look over at the other digital board that's showing the day's scores, you know, of what's happening around college football. Mm-hmm. And Minnesota is beating Colorado 49 to 7. <laughs> Minnesota. Yeah. And I'm going, what the hell happened to these two programs? Then I remembered that the week before, Georgia Tech beat Western Carolina, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. That team that I was on in 94, our only win was against Western Carolina. That's wild. It, there's some look. You want to know how we live in the matrix? That you know what? It's been 61 <laughs> years since Roger Maris broke the home run record, and you know what the number is? 61. 61. Just look around for a second, guys. Does that not freak you out? Let's be honest. Where's Neo? <laughs> When's Keanu Reeves showing up in a suit telling me where I need? I'm right here. What white rabbit? Oh, I'm geez. right here. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, so, speaking of, speaking about keys, like the key maker on the matrix, got a good game tonight, man. Virginia Tech, West Virginia. People forget, I mean, these are old Big East, I mean, rivals. I mean, you literally mm-hmm. played from 73 to 2005. Since then, you've only played twice, and there's no future meeting scheduled. I wish we could find a way because I love this matchup. I know we have the backyard brawl with West Virginia and Pitt, and that's cool. But Virginia Tech, West Virginia, it just feels right, man. It feels like college football. My key to this game, uh, if you look at it, uh, West Virginia's defense, 
they've allowed every offense worth their salt to do what they've wanted to do. Like, for example, right. Pitt, right, with Keaton Slovis, they, they, they were hitting over 300 yards passing against Kansas. You allowed over 200 yards rushing, and you've given up in aggregate, and all of your games total come on, six yards per play. It's not about JT Daniels. Wheaton's a hell of a player at receiver. They've got some good, mm-hmm. capable backs. Defensively, Tom, they're not taking away the strength of the other team or at least reducing it. At some point, to use a basketball reference, you got to make them dribble with their left a little bit. Yeah, there, there, there's no doubt about it. And if, if, if the left for Virginia Tech would be running the football to some degree, if we're going to count on Grant Wells being kind of the Grant Wells we've seen the last couple of weeks and not the Grant Wells we saw versus Old Dominion, yep. then – West Virginia is going to have to come up with a way of getting them off track um, and getting Grant Wells off schedule offensively and somehow getting West Virginia can't get teams behind the chains. Like when, when West Virginia is playing on defense, they're not having regular third and sevens. They're not having regular third and 10 plus they're providing third downs to manageable situations for the opposing offense. And that somehow has to change. And I'm not so sure that West Virginia isn't to the point now where they're on defense, where they say, you know what the hell with it? We got to sell out. Yeah. We, we, if we're going to go down, let's go down swinging, whether it's early down run blitzes, whether it's bringing the kitchen sink on obvious passing downs, let's, let's just do something to either be disruptive or to create some chaos. Because what we're doing to this point, to your point is we're giving it up on the ground. We're giving it up through the air and every conceivable way we don't have an answer. That's exactly right. At some point, you got to pull the pin and the grenade. I mean, what's the worst case scenario? You're going to keep giving up yeah, yards and points. Like how, how, what's happened? That's exactly right. And it's funny, you, Tom. You bring up my key for Virginia Tech is just that Grant Wells. You throw four picks against Old Dominion. Hadn't thrown one since. You transfer from Marshall. That's a big step going from Marshall to Virginia Tech with a lot of pressure on it. I think maybe that first game, there was a little bit of sure. nerves there, especially when you go back and watch some of the throws sailed on them a little bit. But I'm going to get uh, – so that you've got to protect the ball defensively with Brent Pry and that – I mean, Lane Stadium sold out. It's going to be nuts. Inner Sandman, I think they'll be fine defensively. But a name to remember, all right? And apparently if your name's Dax, you can play defense. Oh, yeah. You know, Dax, Dax, Dax Hill, Hill from yeah. Michigan. Dax Holyfield has 23 tackles, eight tackles for loss, a sack – Two yeah. fumble recoveries, a forced fumble. He sold 13 hot dogs at halftime and just Ooh, made Lizzie. an A-plus a lot. on his uh, philosophy midterm. Yeah, so <laughs> at some point, Lizzie. you know, th- there's some guys on Virginia Tech. I think you're going to see a either score. I know this. <laughs> stop the presses. A score on special teams or on defense from Virginia Tech tonight Beamer that ball. ends up being Beamer the difference. Ball. Beamer ball. Okay. Hey, by the way. I have to correct you on one thing. I assure you, if he's at Virginia Tech, they are not offering philosophy class. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, very that's very true. That's very true. But, uh, Tom, too, I, I want to ask you, I, I know I know, we're going to talk a little bit more about the other games, but Florida, Tennessee, how do you see it? I don't know. Can Anthony Richardson complete a pass that results in a touchdown? I mean, Well, I don't know. Is Billy going to run him at all, Tom? Is At some point, is Billy going to run him? He's going to treat him like Joe Flacco. Like, you have a Ferrari. Yeah, I'll I mean, use this it, example. You have a Ferrari for a day. I'm not driving the speed limit, dog. I'm going 1,000 miles an hour. I think, they're, I, I think you're 100% correct in how they need to utilize his legs and him in the run game because that is something – that creates an entirely different set of circumstances exactly. defensively for Tennessee. Exactly it forces right. you to have to play 11 on 11. When you don't run the quarterback, you're playing 11 on 10 because you don't have to account for that extra hat in the box. And so I think they've got to put the pressure with the quarterback run game on Tennessee. But at the end of the day, if Tennessee is able to reel off 85, 90 plays, all right, that Florida cannot win this game without some semblance of a passing game. Exactly. They're going to have to create big chunk plays in the passing game to keep pace. Because if Tennessee is able to, I don't want to say score at will, but if Tennessee has done what we've seen them do to this point, and that is move the football through chunk plays, short drives that result in touchdowns, the only way Florida's keeping pace is to be able to return that in kind through the air. And for what we've seen, uh, we know what Anthony Richardson can do with his legs. He's a monster athlete, but the, the passing game performance, and, yeah. and to be honest with you guys, you can even go back to you can even go back to the the Utah game, and I've got Utah this week, so I went back to that game. He didn't play very good in that game outside of a couple of distinct plays, and so some answer has to to emerge in the passing game for Anthony Richardson. 
I, I agree. I mean, it ended up costing him the game. I mean, you go back and look at that Utah game, he could have pulled the ball on a couple of those zone reads and hit he his could head have. on the goalpost. And I thought he was going to more. Tom, I want to ask you about the Bedlam rivalry. Reports are Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are not going to play each other anymore once Oklahoma moves to the SEC. Sounds like there's a little bit of sour grapes on Oklahoma State side with the athletics department and Coach Gundy. And Oklahoma is saying, look, that was Oklahoma State's decision not to want to continue the rivalry. Is the loss of this rivalry bad for college football, or will this be a non-issue? I think any loss of a rivalry is bad for college football. I think any loss of a special weekend for both alumni bases and, and the student athletes, and, and regardless of sport, if you decide not to play for what looks like petty grievances here, which is what I don't like, if you decide not to play, then why are you deciding not to play? If Oklahoma is going to the SEC and Oklahoma is knowingly going to have a more difficult schedule during the regular season and is still willing to play this game, what does that tell you about the level of importance of this game from a rivalry uh, perspective? I, I, you know, I don't care how unregionally based college football becomes, and it's probably going to become worse in that regard, but if you have long-standing 80, 90, 100, 120-year rivalries that can still be played, play them. Yep. Play them for the sake of – Everybody else, forget your little grievances and, you know, you're upset about this or you're upset about that. So, yeah, I think it's bad for college football. I think, and I think it's bad for the fans and the alumni bases. And then we all miss out. We all miss out on a fantastic weekend of football and a game that we're going to look forward to, regardless of whether or not we're a fan of either of those teams. And now, what's the likelihood that that game gets replaced against an FCS or a G5 opponent to help <laughs> lighten the schedule? High. The Oklahoma a and I agree. It's a shame. It is. Yeah, uh, Blaine, it, we're running out of time here. One quick question, if you got one on one from the Booster Club. Yeah, I got a couple of things. First, Tom, that Mandalorian helmet behind you to the right is sweet. And two, no, yes. Legos. Yeah. Oh, that's hey, Legos. Legos, man. That's Love well done. Oh. That's we artistry. Like Batman. Artistry. <laughs> that, man. Where's the commissioner? That's dope. Super that's dope. Great. We're going to go to <laughs> M. Hutton, Tom. He has a question for you. He says, UCLA yeah. open at a two, uh, plus two and a half versus Washington next week. How can this line be real? U, uh, UCLA is barely beating Sunbelt teams. Shout out South Alabama and Washington just beat a ranked Big Ten hangover. You know, those, those folks in the desert are in business for a reason, right? And <laughs> I think that, that sometimes they take, and I do this too, it's hard to get 85, 18, 19, 20-year-olds to get up for a team that when you're watching mm -hmm. tape all week long, you turn the tape on, you're like, boy, we are so much better than these guys. Yeah. So guess what happens? You don't focus. You don't prepare. All right? The other team's got nothing to lose and everything to gain. You go out and you play bad, and you happen to win the game because at the end of the day, you had better athletes and you pulled off a player. Yeah. Okay? And I see it. I, mm -hmm. I, yeah. And so I, I think the odds makers now, they, they look to this and they say, well, UCLA, Washington is going to have UCLA's attention, right? The, the prep, the focus, how they go into the game is going to be in, entirely different. And to me, that's how I would explain that. Um, I yeah. still don't think we know how good Washington is. I, I'm not convinced we know. Like, I look at Washington. What tells me Washington is any better than Washington State? All right. How about, is Washington right now any better than Kansas or Duke? I don't know. I, I don't know yet enough about the, the sample size for what we've seen from so many of these teams. We're finding out e more each and every week, but I, I can see this game between UCLA and Washington being very close. Yeah. Well, Tom, I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you so much. We're going to have you next week. Enjoy your time, Mandalorian helmet, Batman Lego helmet as well. It's just a great situation. <laughs> we appreciate you as always. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Have a great weekend. If you like that content, go ahead and subscribe because we're going to be balling every day on Crane & Company. Hit that like button while you're at it and go ahead and smash it like Derrick Henry on an ISO run.